Hey everybody and welcome to another Project Sunwave Mapping 101. In the last video we made this little cute shed over here and it looks wonderful. And in addition to that I figured we could add a little house. So that would kind of make sense for the shed to you know, be next to. And to do that we are again going into the building editor. We're going to click file new. And we're just going to select the same template and the same size in OK. In this case we are going to draw a living room. Um, let me think for a bit how am I going to design this house. Let's go with living room. Control was one. Living room, I think 4x4 four four works just fine. Let's add a dining room next to that one. Also 4x4. Four four. Let's add a bedroom. And I'm just kind of doing this as we go. Bathroom in the middle. Maybe another bedroom on the side. And then a kitchen. like that make it a bit more square and we're gonna add a laundry room in addition to this now like last time the name in here just defines the name in the editor and the internal name is the one that we really care about that's the room definition that we need and I will again provide a link for you in the description to where you can find the room definitions that you can use in this editor now the thing I didn't point out last time um, of course these are all just you know called kitchen and bathroom but for bedroom they're all called bedroom even though the real name or their editor name is bedroom one two and three that's because the room definition doesn't care about how many rooms you make the room definition is going to be the same even if you made 40 bedrooms or 40 living rooms the internal name is going to be the exact same we're going to add a new room and we're going to call this one laundry and the internal name is also going to be laundry. Some of this stuff is very straightforward, makes it very easy. And let's see, for the internal walls, we are going to select something different. Let's go for a blank, whitish, off white canvas. Now, if you add a new room by default, it's going to give it a trim for the bunker. Um, you most likely don't want to have this in your building, so I'm going to select none again. The floor, I like. You know what I'm gonna do? I like this. Where are you? Checker pattern. And then of course we're gonna add some grime. Okay. And I'm gonna draw that out here. We have a little laundry room right next to the kitchen. I'm gonna make the kitchen a little bit bigger. Uh, make this bedroom also bigger. We have a small bedroom, a big bedroom, and a little bit bigger kitchen. In this case, we are going to use the place wall tool and I'm going to use it to actually remove a wall, which is kind of different from what the name suggests. By default, nothing is selected, just like we had with the roof tool last time. And if I drag, it will create an object shape saying, hey, there's a wall here, but there's actually not a wall being drawn. And we can use this to our advantage because if nothing's being drawn, we can also take out walls in the middle of our house. And this will work in game. You don't have to question that this is this works just fine it really takes out the wall for you and this gives us a more of an open house or open floor plan which i really like in game um you may have you could you can ask yourself well, why not just draw a giant living room that's because we want living room stuff to spot in the living room and dining room items to spot in the dining room now with living rooms and dining rooms it's probably not going to matter that much but if you're doing the same thing for it let's say a living room and then the kitchen Either it's going to be a whole lot of bunch of books in the kitchen or your living room is going to have pots and pans. That's a bit weird and that's probably not what you, not what you, what you want to go for. Now, we have the rooms out. I will also show you how to actually draw a wall. Um, if you have the draw wall tool selected, you have two options up here. You have the exterior wall tool and the interior wall tool. For the exterior wall tool, it will draw the exterior walls. So I can select, let's select this, this one to make a point. I can draw this wall here, but if I draw this on the inside, it will still have nothing selected. That's the one that's selected in the interior wall. If I take these back out and then go for an interior wall, I can select a wall there, and draw that on the interior, but this will not reflect on the exterior. So you can have two different selections, one for the interior, one for the exterior. Now I'm going to change the look of this building a little bit 
but I'm not going to use the draw wall tool. I'm just going to change the rooms and the walls that they have selected. Now I'm going to, I can do this from here like we've done in the previous video, but the way I like to do this is to select the draw room tool, then right click on the room, so I know it's selected up here, and then I can use the interior wall tool to select another tile and it will change it in the room. Uh, to me this is a lot faster than going in, clicking, clicking, clicking and going back and forth. I can just go to every room, quickly select a different tile, be happy with it and then don't really worry about all the other stuff. I want to have an orange house, I don't know, let's go for... Let's go for this boring ass wall pattern. I think that looks good. Now for the floor, I want to do something different. As you can see, there's a floor section in there. And then we go with, I like this dark wooden one. I can just go to every room here and change it up a little bit. And this is way faster than doing it in the edit room option. I'll show you trims as well in this video. Um, I'm going to change the wall here real quick to this default white one go to trims for the interior wall and now I can as I still have the room type selected I can scroll down and select something and it will apply a trim just like it did a floor a wall type now, I like to have a trim with this wall because it looks very cool and it gives us a really warm feeling for the living room and the dining room now, how do I change that for the outside room because or the exterior wall? Because there's, of course, there's nothing to select by right-clicking on the outside, and that's a bit tricky. Either you can have the draw room tool selected and just change the exterior wall, that works just fine, or you can go to Building Properties and change the exterior wall from there. I kind of like the wooden planks idea, but maybe want to go for a darker one and that works for me I kind of like that I'm going to stick with that now like last time we are going to add some doors and some windows because you don't want to live in a doorless windowless hellhole at least I don't so I'm going to make the house that I kind of would like to live in if possible at some point and add some doors there I like to have a back door in the laundry I see that a lot of the vanilla houses and in houses in general that I see online in America, so I like to do it, and it, it works great right in game if you want to get the fuck out, I mean, let's let's be honest, it's, it's a nice get out of jail card. And some windows, and I'm gonna match the white ones in this case, or these, yeah, like these, and then I'm not gonna add any curtains for the dining room, space them out a little bit more, and let's have one there and then for the bedrooms I am going to add a little curtain there and there we have a let's add a window that with a closed shutter in the bathroom okay, move this over now in this tool you have a select the move objects tool it lets you select move objects very straightforward doesn't need much explanation that's all it does um, but yeah, I'm quite happy with this. Now I need to add some doors to the inside as well. Maybe we want to change the door frame for that. And change the door type again to the basic wall. And just space them out nicely. That looks quite good. That one there. I'm quite happy with how this looks. So yeah. Let's, uh, let's stick with it. Let's add some furniture. Because we haven't done that a lot. And I'm just going to go through it. And this should be mind blowing because I'm really just selecting and putting stuff down. And I probably have more stuff than you do because I have a bunch, a bunch of custom tiles. Um, I will explain how to make and get those in a later video. See the door is over there. So maybe we want to at the table first so we get a better dynamic of how things work. Let's add the chairs uh, they don't have to all line up because that I mean it's a zombie apocalypse you don't have to be too too specific with how things are standing couches let's go to this one we can have it like that and a nice 
table in the middle, and then add a little television between the doors. And maybe in storage, we want to add this cabinet right there. I think that looks decent for a living room. It's not the best, it's not the worst. Go to the kitchen real quick. We have a counter staff with a bunch of counters. And we are just going to draw them all over the place. Um, I tend to just draw them everywhere. And then when I place an oven or a cooking element, I just take one out and put it there. And for the refrigeration, I do the same thing. Now in sinks, we have sinks. You want to place those on top of the counter. If you place the sink first and then the counter, the counter will be on top of the sink. Uh, don't do that. Put them down in logical order. A good tip here is if you hold the Alt button, you can select any furniture and you will then jump to that selection so you can place more stuff. So if you want to take this out and maybe add a corner piece, you can easily select it, delete it, and then put in a new piece. And then, you know, it will save you a little bit of time. Now that's what I'm going to do here for the bedding. I'm going to select the bed so I don't have to scroll down again. I can just select it and then maybe do like this kids thing and add a little playing rug around and then add a storage cabinet on the side like that and maybe a box with toys. I think that looks pretty good. Now for the bathroom, we are going to add a bathtub, a sink, see the door is there, I think. oh wait, no, I, have a, I have a pretty big bathroom, so we can actually add a nice counter, again, selecting the counter so I don't have to look it up, and we're going to place that one down there, selecting the sink, and then put these, oh, I just have to, a bit more stylish ones. Now there is a tab called walls, dec decoration walls. Uh, I moved it up for you, it's probably somewhere down here. And there you have a bunch of mirrors and they look very good in the bathroom. I, mean, I think everybody has a mirror in the bathroom, so you should probably add some. Um, that covers most of the house. We're gonna add a laundry, laundromat, mat, whatever the fuck the thing is called in English, I really don't know. I'm just gonna put one down. Um, this one is laundry. I think the bottom one is the dryer. Uh, so we're also going to put in a dryer and uh, be quite happy with that. And let's add a shelf. We can actually store some stuff there as well. Um, oh wait, we could add a trash bin. And then I think we covered all the bases except for lights. Um, let's add this one in the corner. And let's add this one outside. I'm gonna hit Ctrl S and save this out as house zero one. Of course, the name for the house can be whatever you want. Um, I'm gonna hit O. O hides all the objects, and I'm gonna hit Ctrl G to hide the grid to get a better look of how this looks. And then I'm just gonna go through my rooms a little bit to see how they, you know, look without a grid and all the object squares. And I think it looks. A bit boring, but pretty decent for a first house. So again, I'm going to hit Ctrl G. And I'm going to hit O again, because otherwise I cannot select any of these options. And I'm going to go back to my furniture tool. Go to lighting indoors and add some light switches. I think this one makes most sense near the door. On the other side. And then for the dining room, I'll put it there. I'm just going to go through every room and put them down, try to not put them on the door, and like that, there we go. Now outside, I want to add a light there and there, and for the roof, we're going to do a little bit more of an interesting style roof that we did in the last video. We're going to go up one floor, and then we have a whole bunch of options. Now, I'm going to go with, what am I going to do? Let's make a shallow roof, so we have regular slopes and a peak is basically a slope on both sides as you can see by the icon and a dormer just connects to the other pieces we'll go up i'll do a whole separate how to make cool roofs video so you don't have to worry about how to figure this out 
Um, but I'm going to make a slope. No, I'm going to go with the west side, which is on, uh, you know, that side of the building. I'm going to go with a hor uh, vertical peak. I always mess those up. And draw that one out there. And then I'm going to go with a shallow slope on the east side. Hit Ctrl S. I'm quite happy with that. Um, I kind of want to change it up a little bit though. Um, I go to roof top or roof slopes, not tops. Tops are the flat ones. Slopes are the ones we have now. Slopes are the ones you can click on afterwards and change uh, what you already have. Rooftops and all the other stuff stays the same. Roof sl slopes actually are dynamic and you can change them, which is quite nice. Same goes for the roof caps. I now have the blue ones, but I don't, really don't like them. I'm going to make it white to get a little bit of contrast between the lower floor and the upper floor. And that looks pretty good. The only issue is we have a ginormous gap here in the wall. And we need to fix that. Now, be it default, there's nothing in isometric mode, the tool or the mode that we have been using so far to fix this. That is because there are more tiles available to you than there are actually by default set up in isometric mode. Now to set them up in isometric mode, we will do that in a future video. For now, we are gonna go and export tile mode real quick. Now tile mode is a little bit different from isometric mode. The main difference is it doesn't select a layer for you to draw on by default. You have to select that layer manually. Now you can draw anything on any layer, but that may cause issues uh, for you in the future probably want to draw stuff on the layer that it's meant to be on. Now, if you're not sure, think about it real hard because you will probably find a layer that it's best suited on. In general, most stuff is drawn on the furniture layers, but like the roof caps that we're going to draw right now, could probably be drawn on the roof cap layer. If you have any questions, just put them down in the comments, but I think you will be able to figure it out. And you can always, you know, save your building, put it in the world, and then test it out in the game yourself to see if it works. Now we want to add a roof cap to this side, so I'm going to select roof cap. You can do this afterwards, that's not relevant at this point. I'm going to look for roof, and I know that the one we're looking for is in roofs underscore accents zero one. Now, these are all the tile sets available to you. Even custom ones that you add later on will appear in this list. So the search tool is really, really handy. Now, I want to use this one. I have roof cap selected and I can just drag and draw. I can drag it out and put it wherever I'd like, but I'm going to, you know, drop it in the lines and just put it where I need it. I'm going to select this little cap piece on the end and draw that over there. Now, I already have a roof cap on this side, which is on this layer, which was created when drawing the roof. So if I actually put a cap there, it will take it away because there can only be one tile on one square on one layer. Now, that's OK. There's another roof cap layer. So I'm going to click on that one. And as you can see, the, the white roof or the white roof cap doesn't disappear. And I can just draw on top of that one. But now if I want to draw on this one, I have an issue because the roof, the, the no, let's do this, yeah. The roof that we have here, the peak, that's creating a roof cap here, but the slope that we've drawn afterwards has also created a roof cap there. So we have two roof caps drawn on top of, the, of each other. Now to bypass this, I'm just gonna draw this item on the wall overlay, <coughs> sorry, on the wall overlay layer, and it will work just fine. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna select the other tile and drag it there. Now, as you may have noticed, I'm not able to drag and rotate these items. That's because in tile mode, that's not been set up for you. That's what isometric mode is for. In tile mode, you really just draw the tile one to one to the thing that you have selected. Maybe we want to add a little bit of a peak. And just draw this out. Now, I know exactly which tiles I want to use for this. You may want to play around a little bit. But I think that makes the house look a lot more finished. And I'm going to save it. Oh, again, before I save, I'm going to crop this to the minimum, save this out, and drag it into the world. I put it right there. Drag them out a bit. I'm quite happy with that. 
and in future videos we will kind of dress up this nice this video a bit nicer wow jesus words are hard in the future video we will dress up this building a little bit nicer add a little bit more details to it most likely in tile mode and I will show you how to get the tiles from tile mode into isometric mode so you can also use more stuff there. Uh, as always, uh, shout out to the people supporting me on Patreon. Thank you very much. I really, really appreciate it. And if you like these videos, consider liking and subscribing. And I hope you have a very, very nice day.